Hi everyone, it's Shadage again, and today we'll be solving problem number nine. Here we have the problem. A Pythagorean triplet is a set of three natural numbers, a less than b less than c, for which a squared plus b squared equals to c squared. For example, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals to 9 plus 16, which equals to 25, which equals to 5 squared. There exists exactly one Pythagorean triplet for which a plus b plus c equals to 1000. Find the product a, b, c. So to get started, I'm going to create a method that figures out if three numbers creates a valid triplet. So I'm going to have a method def is triplet and I'm going to have my values a of type int, b of type int, and c of type int. And I'm also going to take the sum because we, uh, we want, the problem is that there exists exactly one Pythagorean triplet for which a plus b plus c equals to 1000. So basically, we're going to have a sum value, sum int. And now what we're going to do is, we're going to have a few conditions. So our first condition is that a times a, a squared plus b times b, b squared, equals to c times c, c squared. So that's the first part. Now our second part is going to be that a plus b plus c equals to 1000. So we do and a plus b plus c equals the sum. And our last con uh, two conditions are going to be that a is less than b and b is less than c. A is less than B and B is less than C. So with this method, it will only return true if these three numbers and the sum uh, create a valid triplet. So now we need to figure out a way so that we can figure out all of, uh, we can go over all the possible values for A, B, and C, and through that, figure out a valid triplet in uh, in by d using is triplet. So I'm going to have def and we're going to get the triplet because we know that from the problem there's only going to be one triplet for which is triplet returns true. So we're going to have triplet for sum and we're going to take our sum of type int. And we're going to do this using a for loop, actually a for comprehension. And the, way, uh, the reason why we're doing a for comprehension is we want to go over all of the values of A and all of the values of C and all of the values of C. These ends make us want to use a for comprehension. So to do for comprehension, we're going to have a for loop for. And our first uh, value is going to be A in. And we're going to have our range from 1 to sum. And the reason we have sum is because the maximum value of a uh, sh will must be ma uh, the maximum value of a must be sum because if a was greater than the sum that means that b and c would be less than this uh, less than 0 which means it's negative and that wouldn't be a valid triplet for sure. Actually, to be exact, we should uh, uh, we would have to do one to sum minus two, but since it doesn't make that much of a difference, we can just leave that out. And now comes the comprehension part. We're going to use a semicolon to introduce a new variable, and we're going to have b in one two, and this time we need to make sure that our b value is going to be less than the amount uh, needed to uh, have our sum equal uh, to have our sum of these three values equals to the sum value we need. So we're going to have b in 1 2 sum minus a. Basically the remaining part. 
And now we're going to have C, and we're going to use a similar technique to figure out our range to sum minus A minus B. Let's clean this up a little bit. Here. And now our last part is we only want to get a value from this for loop if our, uh, our three values create a valid triplet. So you're going to do if is triplet a, b, c, and sum. So if we get a triplet, we're going to get this for loop. And now what we want to do is we need to get the value. So we're going to do yield a, b, c. Let's assign this to a value. Triplets. So now we have our list of triplets. But, but we know as the problem states that there's only going to be one of the triplets, which is going to be our answer. So we can do triplets dot head, which gets us the first value, also the only value. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run our, I'm going to get the triplet for the sum. So val answer triplet. And the reason why I'm doing answer triplet, not answer, is because our actual answer is going to be the product of these numbers, which we'll get later. But for now, let's get the answer triplet. And that's going to be triplet for sum. And our sum value is going to be 1,000. So now let's print our, uh, our answer triplet. Answer triplet. And now uh, uh, let's run this problem, this program. And we get our triplet, which is 200, 375, and 425 for the values A, B, and C. And now let's calculate what our actual answer is going to be, which is the multiplication of these three values. So we're going to have val answer, which is going to equal to. So we're going to get the three values from our answer triplet and multiply them together. And we're going to do that by doing answer triplet dot underscore one, which gets us the first value in this tuple. And now we're going to have answer times answer triplet dot underscore two, the second value, and answer triplet dot underscore three, the third value. So now we've multiplied them all up, and let's print on our answer. So now we get our answer, but there's one improvement we can make. If we look at our answer, uh, if we look at our answer, our a value is 200. But when we look at our for loop, we're going to look at a in one to sum. That means that we're going to look at all the values from one to 1,000. So basically, even after we get our triplet, which is going to be two, uh, for which the a value is going to be 200, we're still going to look at all of the other values of a after 200. Wouldn't it be nice if we just stop when we get our answer? So we can do this using lazy collections. And I learned this pretty recently. So to do lazy collections, I'm going to just do one to sum dot view, which gets us a lazy collection. And by doing dot view, these, uh, and since this is lazy collection, these also become lazy collections. And so now that we have lazy collections, what's going to happen is when we run triplets.head, since it's lazy, it's not going to calculate everything possible. It's only going to keep on calculating it until it gives an answer, which is going to be the first element. So now we're not going to go past uh, 200. We're not going to go to 201, 202. We're just going to stop when, uh, when we get this triplet. So we can run again.
So we get our same answer, but it's only a really, uh, it's only a slight improvement for our sum value as 1000. But on my computer, when the sum value was 2000, it is twice as fast as without lazy collections. So this is one of the nice things in Scala uh, that, uh, that makes it fun to use. You have these simple methods. We only added seven characters to turn this into a lazy collection. And for 2000, it is twice as fast. So this is one of the really nice things that uh, in Scala. So uh, that's going to be our final way to, uh, to solve this problem. And I'll be creating a ne my next video soon in which I'll solve Euler 10. I'll see you there. Bye.